So this is Baruch here. I'm at the Tikkun Elevator Kolo and looking at another shear. This is a picture of Rabbi Yosef Chaim Memran. Maybe it's taken a few years years back. I imagine that he's more white, more gray. A man who travels all over the world and really speaks to all different kinds of people, just someone like me. And I learned by this. I, I I was able to learn with him for like four years. You know, like a, a half an hour, an hour every day. I remember what it, it was half an hour probably. Uh, every day it was, it, but he went through a lot of different things with me particularly he was teaching me uh just the fundamentals of trying to understand what's going on in the rishash the rishash sitter rabbi memram is Sfarti, but he's grew, he was born and grew up in in canada and uh in montreal he's come from a french background Sfardic man background that way his native language is either French or, or, or English. And he moved to England uh, to learn there. He was a young man. I think he was like 10. And so he's a little English accent too. So this is a really a uh, world-renowned person who's coming up. This is a book that everybody needs to read. Uh, once again, it's uh, The Ultimate Connection with God available on Amazon. Now, I, this is my third time going through this, I said, in the last year. Because it's a topic that if you really feel like, especially now that we're in times of war, people are being killed, massacred. Uh, the world really either hates the Jews or pities the Jews. But it's all the same kind of idea. We're under their yoke. How can we break through to have God answer our prayers? So the last time he said, let's, let's, let's talk about a technique that we need to master in order to really be able to pray successfully. So he said to really connect to the Almighty, and we want to pray for salvation here, to save our boys and to save the land of Israel. So the first section he calls, he calls the calming the storm of the mind. So the mind is raging. So he says the compulsive thinker, that was the topic that we looked at the last time. And he says that if we work on this, we can get good at this. Uh, but we have to work on it. So now he, th he has a new part. Let's see how, how big this is. It's a short piece, so we'll le learn it. He said, beware of repetitive thoughts. So now he takes a, a little gloss from, uh, from this book, the Shari Tshuva, we'll read it in English. You should be aware that great gifts were given to us through the positive commandments of the Torah, such as free will, Concerning the gift of the Vekas, it is written, To him, attach yourself. Through these gifts, man was created. Now, this seems a little bit vague to me, exactly what he meant to say here. He said the, the positive commandments of the Torah. And then he said, for example, what's a good, such as free will. I don't, I don't know that that's a commandment of the Torah. Concerning the gift of the Vekas, it is written, To him, attach yourselves. Through these gifts, the man was created. So let's go over here and see Vada. Kima Alas al Yonos. Nimsrul Lona Bemitzvas Ase. So they're given over to us in the form of positive commandments. Kamo Ma'alas Habahira. So, like, say, for example, that we have free choice. Now, exactly how that goes, I still don't understand it. Let's read Rabbi Memra. The Creator gave you the gift of a mind so that it could be it serve you. The truth is your mind is nothing more than a tool you can employ when you deem it useful. It is there to assist you with specific tasks, and when each task is completed, you lay it down. Now, that's supposed to be the idea. In most cases, some 80% of people's thinking is repetitive and useless. But the story doesn't end there because it's so often negative and dysfunctional, much of our thinking is actually harmful to us. To verify this, all you need to do is observe your mind for a short time without trying to influence or change your thought. Just watch your thoughts, he says. Now this, I think, is a very important idea. Uh, if the studying by him is trying, this is my third time trying to understand this or really getting a grasp on it. 
So I know that he says that trying to change your thoughts, he says to just learn how to watch your thoughts. Repetitive, and you'll see what's going on there. Repetitive, negative thoughts that can become obsessive, even for people who are otherwise emotionally healthy. They drain one's vital life energy, and the consequences can be very serious indeed. This kind of compulsive thinking is actually an addiction. Really? It's an addiction? An addiction is simply an activity you feel that you are no longer able to choose to stop. It seems that it is stronger than you are. Another characteristic of an addiction is that it gives you a false sense of pleasure. Pleasure that invariably turns into pain. But we can all gain control over our tendencies for overthinking. This is an addiction that can definitely be broken, and it can be done painlessly with the correct approach. Now, Rabbi Memory, let's, let's, let's read the, bl the blurb at the bottom. Your mind is nothing more than a tool. It is there to assist you with specific tasks. When each task is completed, you lay it down. At least that's what it should be. But we get a certain pleasure out of going over the fights that we have in our heads and the different conflicts and the different arrangements and all the different kinds of things. There's some kind of pleasure in that for us. And he's saying that it's destroying the possibility of your being free and independent. That free will he's talking about. This is Baruch Fleischman, and this is the Tikkun Elevator Call Out. Yeah.